Earlier this week, I reported that Representative Eric Burleson had stated that Luis Elizondo had gone to Washington, D.C. and gave a presentation about UFOs that was generally in line with what David Grush's story was. Now, we have way more details about that particular meeting that I just had to make another video about. So let's dive in, see what those details are. And I got to say, it changes a lot of things. Let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, hit that subscribe button. Put our new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day, y'all. And of course, hit that like button. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for supporting the channel there. And of course, vetters, leave your comments down below. What do you think um, of this brand new information? Um, you know, basically, um, there's a, a Republican out of South Carolina. Um, his name is Representative Ralph Norman, and um, he stopped and talked to Matt Laszlo from Askapol, and Matt asked him some great questions. We're going to take a look, uh, listen to a clip of some audio of that conversation. We're going to take a look at a tweet from Christopher Sharp of Liberation Times. He's a journalist um, talking about who was with Luis Elizondo when he gave this presentation. But I will say, I think there's some conflicting information because of Matt Laszlo's reporting, but... I don't know. Let's find out. And then also, I had something very interesting. Um, as I looked in to try to figure out who were these people that went with Luis Elizondo. So let's dive in. All right. First thing we're going to take a look at is right here. Okay. So there's uh, Representative Ralph Norman. Um, and right here, he says... Um, Okay, we don't, we don't really need that. Uh, g -g 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 right here, okay. Askapol walked away with Norman where we inquired about the briefing the Conservative Opportunity Society received Wednesday from Lou Elizondo. Two pilots, one who's a veteran combat pilot who took pictures, according to Norman, and a scientist. It's been portrayed by the media as crazies that are identifying unidentified flying objects, but it's not, Norman exclusively told Askapol. He's been doing this 30-some years, combat veteran, very qualified. I'm going to have him back. In fact, we may open it up. Everybody ought, y'all ought to know it. Everybody should. I heard he corroborated what the whistleblower, David Grush, testified to this summer. Absolutely, Norman replied to Askapol. Yes. So let's listen to this full audio because there's a lot more there. I'd already listened. Boop. So I heard you had a little visitor yesterday. Lou Alejandro? Oh, yeah. That you brought him in? What? What made you um, reach out or get connected with him? I had heard, well, I'd heard about it. Yeah. One, he's an expert. And that's the other thing. I'm going to bring him back. Everybody, okay. you young people, all of here particularly, because we, we've got a real problem. This isn't Playland. And he told us about the, the facts of the matter, um, about what's happening. And uh, that, too, was concerning. And he wouldn't give any classified things, as yeah. you would expect. But, my God, it's, uh, you know, I guess we're just going to be unprepared and just take it. This isn't political. This isn't yeah. politics. And for you young people, um, of course it affects all of us, yeah. young and old. Do you, what was the heart of his talk? Was it on SAP's special access programs or was it? Good question, yeah, Matt. Broader. Yeah. Well, it was brought him. He answered. He spoke for 20 minutes. At COS, we started at 8. He's talked for 20 minutes. And then we answer questions. Yep. And, you know, where's the funding? coming from from the government it's this it's been portrayed by the media as a um, crazies that are yeah. identifying you know unidentified flying objects yeah. and um, but it's not yeah. he uh, he's been doing this 30 some years combat better knows very qualified I'm gonna have him back in right. fact we may open it up to everybody on y'all ought to know it everybody should public even then yeah interesting because I heard he corroborated what the whistleblower, David Grush, Absolutely. testified to this yeah. summer. 
Interesting. And you got to realize that he has no he has no reason to do this. I mean, he, he has yeah. no reason. Well, he's not getting paid. Yeah. You know, he comes up here free of charge and is sending us all the slides. A lot of it is most of us did not understand. Yeah. Other than it's real, mm -hmm. we have to take we have to know about it. And the American people need to know about it. What was the most surprising thing you heard from him? The the uh, pilots he brought in two pilots that had actually witnessed it, yeah. seen it. He showed slides of it, hmm. um, yeah. which was unbelievable. Hmm. So it was him and the two pilots, Navy uh, pilots? No, it was four, four people. Had a scientist, had a uh, combat pilot that had flown missions and mm -hmm. reported what he saw and took pictures. So this isn't yeah. some figment of our imagination. You can bring it up to Speaker Johnson. Um, Everything's been stalled. Yeah, but I mean, he, he, um, he's got his plate full. Now, whether he wants <laughs> to hear about this or not, I don't He's know. still getting his training wheels on. <laughs> That's something yeah. else. Well, I, you know, yeah. he, he's trying. He's doing his best. Yeah. He, um, but, you know, it's, it's disturbing. Yeah. That's interesting, though, because you, were you a part of the oversight mm -hmm. here in the summer? Because we haven't really heard no, much. No, I had, no, I, no I, I, take, I was not part of the, yeah, I, I was on the oversight were. at one time. But not, yeah. I, I didn't hear any of this this summer. Because they testified in July, and then we haven't really heard much on it. And yeah. it's interesting that it's now coming from you and from a different group than the UAP. People. Yes, these are, we, our group is, yeah. we, we're not experts in this field. Yeah. But the information is what needs to be out there. Interesting. And I'm going to have him back, and uh, he's got a lot to say. He's real careful not to breach the yeah. top secret things. Well, and isn't that where there's overlap with what you just got down in the skiff. The no, whole comment on that. But the whole conversation about declassification and overclassification. Right. And that's where well the seriousness of it. Yeah. This is I mean that's what's shocking. This isn't playland. Yeah. I mean, it really isn't. But um, amazing. But do you think the American people can can handle a lot of this information that's currently classified and whether well, they handle it or not, it's up to them. Yeah. You can research anything. It's up to the American people to decide it's you know, freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Let them, let them take. I couldn't decipher everything he had in an hour. You can't, you yeah. couldn't do that. Yeah. But it's up to me to, to decide. Get those who um, can decipher it and walk us through it. And he did a hell of a job. Interesting. As always, appreciate you, sir. You have a good one. Uh, have a good week. So great job by Matt from uh, Askapol. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out. Go support Askapol um, or Askapol. I'm not sure, right? Politician. So maybe it is Askapol. Um, anyway, um, so there he says two pilots came, right? Scientists, right? Okay, so Christopher Sharp then tweets out, Sources have revealed to Liberation Times that Elizondo was joined by a former member of the UAPTF, right, task force, and decorated uniformed military officer, a former military fighter pilot, an eyewitness to a UAP sighting, a former DARPA scientist, and a former political advisor to the Obama administration. And those are interesting descriptions. Um... Right. I can't tell if this a former member of the UAP task force and decorated uniform military officer like it's the same person. A, I think so because of the comma. Right. A former military pilot. So people are saying this is Jay Stratton. This first one. Um, the second one, Ryan Graves. That seems to me a former DARPA scientist. I think it's Hal put off, but that's an interesting way to describe him. And I'll tell you why I think it's Hal put off. And I'm going to show you, actually. And a former political advisor to the Obama administration. That is more than likely John Podesta, um, who's apparently back in the game. Again, I can't confirm, right? But is Jay Stratton a pilot? I don't know. Um, so that's interesting, right? Two pilots, they showed pictures. So basically, they got shown evidence, right? UFO pictures, evidence. He showed them, right? He's, he's proclaiming UFOs are real. And then he showed them that they're real. So I find that fascinating. Um, 
to be honest with you, and that this group is going out giving these presentations. So this is clearly different from what David Grush is doing because he's going out by himself. Um, at least he went one time. I don't know if he's given more uh, presentations than that, to be honest with you. Um, but this is interesting. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's who these people are. I'm just, I'm guessing um, that that's what it is. Right. So what's also interesting here is DARPA has a uh, podcast, y'all. Um, and DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Um, and they have a podcast. I'm going to put a link to it. Y'all should go check it out. It's actually pretty interesting. as a history of DARPA. I mean, there's just a lot to it. I just found that absolutely fascinating. Um, what if like one of the episodes is like our UFO program, right? And they're just like, thanks for tuning in. We're going to tell you about it. And it's just been hidden on this podcast the whole time, like episode 37, uh, the secret to the universe right there. Um, anyway, it's well worth um, checking out. Now, this is something interesting I found. I found an article from Williamton, Williamton, Delaware, okay? It's dated Sunday, August 14th, 1977. The publication is called The Morning News. And on page 34, they have this article about Stanford Research Institute and doing, you know, uh, research with psychics and all that, right? If, if you know Hal Putoff, Dr. Hal Putoff's history. And in it, they talk about, um, one, they talk about his deep involvement with Scientology, which he's kind of denied a little bit. But in this, man, they go on about it. Like, he defended it. He was top level. Like, it was a big deal. And in fact, the government was worried about their involvement with Scientology and running this. And some people in the government said, it's actually best to have the Scientologists doing this work because they know about it. And other people are like, that's a conflict of interest uh, because they may, you know, fudge the results or something like that, I guess they're insinuating. But the DARPA connection. So, again, I don't know if that DARPA scientist is how put off. It would be a, a weird way to describe him because there's not, if you just Google DARPA and how put off, you're not going to find much, okay? Anything really connecting. But I did find this and it's interesting. So, right here it says um, the involvement of Scientologists in the test at SRI partially accounts for at least two government agencies pulling back from funding further work there. All right, let me go. Again, I'll put a link to this. You can read this whole article. It's fascinating. There's a lot in here. Sociologist Marcelo Truzzi, one of the consultants, called in last March to brief DARPA on put-offs and TARG's experiments, says letting Scientologists conduct ESP research is like giving money to a cardinal of the church to do experimentation into the veracity of transubstantiation. That's interesting. Substantiation. I mean, I said that wrong. On the other hand, some within government argue that it makes sense to let Scientologists investigate the psychic claims subscribed to by members of the organization. But at best, this is questionable science. But there's more mentions of DARP in there. And I think that's really like the only connection I could find. And again, they talk about it more right here, right? Um, director of DARPA, right? Talking about just working with them, right? Working with them. Um, and there was another project where they talked about that DARPA, um, sponsored a 145,000 contract to determine whether the Soviet discovered Cerulean photography really depicted the glowing aura of a person's body, eth etheric body. The study found that, I don't know if that's Sir or Kerr, I don't know, but Cur curly and pictures are related to the moisture content in a person's skin a conclusion which is scientifically interesting but certainly not grist for occult lovers um again there's not really much on darpa and how put up but i think it's how put off because he's worked with darpa so they're calling him a darpa scientist i don't know okay i can't confirm that i don't know one i just found that article interesting so you know whatever it's that's just well worth reading uh on its own to be honest with you but, right, this is interesting, if that's who it is, especially if John Podesta is coming back. Um, John Podesta coming back does make a difference. 
because he has been out of the game, right? He was with To The Stars Academy and that whole thing. And maybe there's some more to this that's going to come out with some of the stuff they did with To The Stars Academy, right? I don't know. That, that could be interesting, right? So it'll be uh, interesting to see if they bring Luis Elizondo back and this crew back to give another presentation, maybe publicly with more members of Congress. I don't know. That would be interesting, right? And they testify under oath. I don't know. Um, I, I just, I find this fascinating. Like, and what was their, like, what were they asking for by showing all this, right? What, what were, what was the question? What, what did they want from this, right? What, what is the end game? I'm curious. Is it just disclosure, government support, but specifically what way, right? Um, and I'd also be curious what parts of David Grush's story were corroborated. All of it or which part specifically? You know what I mean? Because they must have, I mean, David Grush's big part of his story is the secret government programs. And he did say that Luis talked about the special access programs. Again, the more I hear about this and, and, you know, I'm just really starting to think that these programs definitely exist. Now, I think the question is, are they really about UFOs? But for me, whether or not these programs exist or not, I'm pretty convinced they do. But again, I think the bigger the question is just, are they really about UFOs? And I just think it would be really hard to just trick all these people. I just, you know, a lot of these people seem really smart. So I don't know that they could be tricked. That, that sounds like a long shot to me. No, y'all, this is going to be a crazy year, I'm telling you. Uh, you know, they wheel out an alien and t uh, like, oh, uh, my God. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I honestly don't know how I would react. I think everyone assumes they know how they would react, right? Like, it's like one of those scenarios where like, you know, something happens in public. Like, oh, I'd, I'd tackle that guy right away, uh, you know, uh, you know. Or whatever the case, right? I'd beat his ass. I'd do something, right? You you do something. You always talk about what you do. Or in war, I'd do that. Are you watching a movie? Oh, God, I'd be doing this. We don't actually know till the moment happens. That's when you find out who you really are because your, your body's just going to do what it's going to do. You're going to react how you're going to react. There is no, you know, if you haven't done any preparation, who knows? Um, that's why people prepare. That's why they train. So that's muscle memory because you can't rely on, well, what I would do. You know, your body just has to do it. And I, you know, which honestly saying that out loud right now, maybe that's something we do need to do. Prepare ourselves for this. Train ourselves to accept this kind of information so that we're ready. Because I honestly don't know how people would act. I've always thought, you know, people will just uh, continue their day. And I think there'll definitely be people like that. But I can't imagine that there wouldn't be some kind of, just craziness in society. Like some people just going crazy with this information, you know? I mean, again, that's reality shifting on a level humanity has never felt. Not since we, I, to me, it's not since humanity realized we're on a spinning rock in this huge open space. The moment we figured that out, that was a huge reality shift, right? Like, holy cow. Okay, there's a lot going on here. That must have been amazing to have been alive during that time, to be honest with you. And now, the next one would be, we're not alone. Out in that big space, there's other people like us. Let's be real. That seems the most, that seems totally logical. And I understand that's not where a lot of people's argument is. It's, it's have those people come here, right? But, man, I'm telling y'all, I just... As we get closer to this and more stuff is about to come out, I really am looking forward to Luis Elizondo's book, this documentary that's going to come out. What's in it? What are they going to say? Um, yeah, and how it moves the needle forward. Again, this is an election year. So is part of this part of that, right, to get people on board, to so make sure they vote? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of interesting, kind of a coincidence. And, you know. There seems to be a lot of coincidences coincidences, <laughs> in this community. Let's be real. 
So I don't know. I, I find it exciting. I find it exciting that they think it corroborates David Grush's story. So it probably means they're saying that Luis Elizondo, again, is saying the juiciest parts that we want to know about, right? Alien bodies and crash UFOs. That's, that's what we really want to know, right? Let's be real. So whew, it's going to be a good year, y'all. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed um, talking about this and um, thinking about this, to be honest with you, because as we get closer into the year, right, closer to some of these things that are going to come out, um, which, by the way, real quick update, I don't know. I, look, there's a potential that David Grush's op-ed is not coming out until after Luis Elizondo's book and documentary. Because let's be real, that's right around the corner. Remember, Danny Sheehan said six weeks from, I think, beginning of February or end of January, somewhere around there, right? That's Luis Elizondo's lawyer, um, at least at one time represented him. So... And David Grush's op-ed was first, first supposed to come out in January. Then it got moved to February, and now it's just nobody knows. But I've just seen some posts here, that, that, but I can't confirm that. So I don't know. But, yeah, look, we'll stay, we'll stay on it. Um, clearly, David Grush wants to make sure that that's all in order. So I think we can be a little patient um, with that. And... According to Gary Nolan, remember, I've, I've covered on this channel, he's working with Soul Foundation to try to find volunteers, and they're working really hard to get that off the ground. So maybe that's where his focus is. I don't know. What would the advantages of David Grush releasing it after Luis Elizondo? I feel like if he wants attention for it, he should release it before Luis Elizondo because if it comes out after the book, right, that all the attention is going to be on Luis Elizondo's book and the documentary and all that. So I don't know. I feel like they might just drop that op-ed any moment now honestly any moment monday that's the best day you're going to want that op-ed to go out in my opinion a monday a tuesday somewhere in there but i don't know we'll see so anyway all right guys we'll see you on the, on the next video tomorrow remember 12 p.m central standard time i do not miss a day don't forget to comment down below what you think of all this um can't wait to read the comments y'all all right, betters, we'll see you tomorrow. Remember, every day's a gift. Peace.